This episode sponsored by Go to Assist Express. Hi, this is Andy McCaskey from SDR News reporting from CES 2010 for the Tech Podcast Network. We're in a very private booth off the show floor because there is a demonstration of some R&D work that is being conducted by an industry association called CABA. One of the things that they have been talking about is the fact that as time progresses to the right here, technology seems to be coming together in all different areas, particularly in the home. If you look at the sensors, you look at the hardware, software, you look at webcam technology, you look at appliances and human factors. They begin to come together to the point where it would be possible in the home to get the information that's needed in a kitchen seamlessly. And that's the focus of some of their research. You're quite familiar with things that have occurred in your own home, where you started out maybe with a, uh, uh, a gaming system that used accelerometer technology, and then a year or two later, you had smartphones that had this incorporated into it. All this combined with miniature projectors that we featured at CES uh, last year, and robotic sorts of systems, all of these things are converging and coming together, and that's the focus of some of the research that's going on. One of the companies that's very active in this is Whirlpool. And Carla is here with us to talk a little bit and give you an advanced look into some of the research that they are doing in a, you know, just one portion of this, what would happen in the magic kitchen. Right, and this is a whole industry group that's working on this together collaboratively from Tyco Electronics, Texas Instruments, Deutsche Schwab, um, and many other companies that are involved in this to show and share the vision of where the kitchen may be in two to ten years out. Well, my wife would love this because the first thing, it's a clear countertop. I don't see any mice. I don't see any keyboard. I don't see any computer. Right. Our research through the association over the past eight years has showed that consumers don't like cluttered on and they don't like cords hanging down and they don't want to worry about their computer or cell phone being splashed with water or food getting dropped on it and they're you know so that's how it led us to believe that this type of environment would test well with consumers and so we went about to do that. So you're combining uh, projection technology there's in this uh, comp this is actually the computer that's yeah. driving this, this yeah. prototype system. Yeah. And the overall system is called the Magic Kitchen, and the Magic Kitchen has a sensor, so if you walked in the door of the kitchen or the hallway, it would know who you are through facial recognition. And it would go then put your default settings in around the content and information that you would want to see around that time of day. Yeah, so, if I walk, so if I walk into the kitchen at 7 o'clock, I might have certain things on my mind on a weekday, on a weekend, or if I come into the kitchen at 9 o'clock at night, it can still recognize me and it kind of anticipates right would, yes that's very true and it would know that at nine o'clock at night you want different information okay then you would want at six o'clock seven o'clock in the morning which may be more like the weather before you head out to know what the messages are that have come in on your cell phone or your landline or maybe your email could be displayed there and maybe you want to know what the traffic is while you're getting the coffee that's brewing a coffee part out then this could be right there and you would get that information that you would want, only you would want. Now, your wife, okay, would come in and maybe she goes to another part of the kitchen or does something else. Her information through a device, something like this, in another part of the kitchen would be different because when she walked in, it knew that it was her. And around this time of the day, this is normally where she stands. Mm -hmm. Now, the kitchen is a very busy place. So you're in and out quickly and everybody uses the kitchen differently. It's not a one size fits all. It's yeah. not as easy as trying to put stuff out in the entertainment area in the home or in the home office. So how do you actually interact with things here? Yeah. Okay, on this one it is front projection coming down. There's a webcam that sits inside of here on a very um, thin client little processor. Mm -hmm. So it's 
like a mini computer, but you can't do Word and Excel. But it's a web page, so it's IP based, and I gesture and move the web page around, or a new web page will come up, or I can talk to it. Okay, so this particular one is not particularly high powered, I understand. <laughs> right. This might be your basic model if this was out in the marketplace today. And um, it is very first generation, but I would gesture to it, and right here, just like I would on an iPhone, um, I would put my hand over it, take it off, and then it's, go it's going to another web page. Oh, okay. So the, the, the content then is assembled in a series of pages, and with the recognition of the person that's come in, it calls up the most likely page that they would, would, would consume. Right, and it moved to another page. This, this page right here, it caught my hand, so now it's going to go the other way. This page is all around um, how to use a stand mixer and put the attachments on. So it's a series of videos. So if in this situation I wanted, I had had my stand mixer here and I would want to know how to put on the food grinder, I would go through these videos and find the one that's a food grinder. And then I would touch it or tell it play video and it would just play it. And then I could come in and I could see game highlights because it would yeah, recognize. Another, uh, app, another yeah. widget that would be there. And in fact, it just beeped at me. It picked up one of the words that I said, so it's going to go to another web page oh, right now. So there's voice recognition as well. Yeah. There is all kinds of stuff in the Magic Kitchen, and I think that this is some really exciting research that uh, CABA, the industry group, is doing. And it's just part of uh, the fun, fun things and interesting things that you can find if you know where to look at CES 2010. It be easier with GoToAssist Express an easy and secure remote support solution purpose-built for individuals, small businesses, and professionals who need to support clients. With the click of your mouse, start a support session. Your client simply enters the code you give them on the fastsupport.com website. With their permission, you have the same access to their computer that you have of your own. You can examine programs, check and modify control panel settings, GoToAssist Express gives you full access to their desktop. Need deeper access? Run the GoToAssist Express diagnostic application to get a system summary, application list, processes, programs that start when the computer starts, network connections, devices, services, along with installed applications, and much, much more. Easily send and receive files back and forth between your and your client's computer. Have another support request come in and need to do two support sessions at the same time? You can run multiple support sessions with GoToAssist Express. Included is an interactive chat client. As you can see, the menu bar of the GoToAssist Express gives you everything you need to do online support. To try GoToAssist Express right now, free for 30 days, you must visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast that's go to assist.com slash tech podcast for a free trial.